What's going on everybody? Today I'm at Pineapple Beach and today we'll be meeting up with the Minister of Tourism, the Honourable Edmund Bartlett, widely known throughout the world as the best tourism minister of any land of any country. He's going to come have lunch with us, experience it how we do it at Jamaica Food Tours, we have a little ackee and saltfish, we're going to have pepper shrimp and of course we'll have a little oxtail to sample. We'll also have some lobster and some fish as well. So. Stay tuned, we're going to just sit down with the Minister of Tourism and see what he has planned for Jamaica tourism, for the gastronomy industry especially, and just talk about our gastronomy, our food. One of a kind, one love. I believe gastronomy can be an industry in Jamaica that can provide income for people throughout Jamaica, not just people in a hotel-based system, but people far and wide in this land that we love. And I believe that it could be a force multiplier and a drive for equality where everybody has to eat, everybody loves to eat, and the best food that we have comes from right here in Jamaica. And the best Jamaican food is prepared by Jamaicans throughout this land. So I'm interested to hear what the tourism minister has to say. We'll be discussing a range of topics, but mostly I'd like to hear about the food, the gastronomy industry, where we're heading and seeing if we can open it up so that everybody can get a chance in the tourism game and get a touch out of it. This is a sea grape. I literally grew up on this when my grandmother had a restaurant, a small little restaurant on the beach. I used to come down after school and pick these. This is found close to the shore and on a lot of the beaches in Jamaica you can find this. This little fruit here is grown mainly in the sandy areas is where you find it and it really pops a lot of punch and a lot of sweetness. Some of the time it's bitter but for my mother always say, boy sometimes it's tough to sour till it's sweet. That's exactly what I'm talking about when I say sometimes it's tough to sour till it's sweet. It almost tastes like it could be, it could, it could make wine. And I've heard people actually make wine with these and different type of alcoholic beverages. Special guest, we have the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett, widely renowned throughout the world as the number one tourism minister throughout any land in the world. And he's taken time out of his busy schedule to come and have some lunch with us today. Minister, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Matthew. I think um, this is a statement that you have been making to the world about the quality of the Jamaica gastronomy. And, you know, it's one that I think has been catching on. Um, we're getting responses, we're getting reviews, and more importantly, we're getting visitors coming in to taste and, you know, enjoy the delectable Jamaican cuisine that are so very expertly crafted and presented by you and your team. Thank you, Minister. And like Minister said, our flavors are inviting to the world. We are the heartbeat of the world and people travel far and wide to come to Jamaica to taste our flavors. It's not just the reggae music, it's not just our beaches, it's everything, the whole Jamaica on a whole. Excited to have some food with him today. We have ackee and saltfish. We know you love your snapper and steamed snapper, so we have some of that. We have oxtail, we have a wide range of authentic Jamaican yeah, dishes yeah. to try. Right, so, you know, eating our Jamaican food is our best way of saying to the world, it's the best food on earth. This is God's little piece of paradise, you know, and, and I, I believe that perhaps Jamaica was made on the eighth day of creation. 
that, that when God was finished with all his good he handiwork, he said, listen, what's missing? And he made Jamaica. Paradise. So, so we are a piece of paradise that is ready for you. But the bigger part of all of this is how we have become this confluence of ethnicity and cultures. Yes, yes. So that fusion creates, you know, the special Jamaican cuisine that we're inviting you to taste. So there's a little piece of you in everything we do because we are out Absolutely. of many one table. Pumpkin base steam fish with okra in there. So you know that when a pumpkin when sweeten up that sauce, give it a nice cook. I don't know if you ever see this. This is squeeze, take away the rawness. Yes man, so this is the ingredients for my fish. I have some okra inside, I have pumpkin, as I said earlier, pumpkin base yeah, fish. We have some scotch bonnet pepper. We have some um, we have some thyme, scallion. Garlic Jamaican season, the smell of it though, may I tell you, that the smell it. have a bite where you just want to drink it like a soup. Woo. And we have our favorite Jamaican snapper, it's red, it's going down here. The reason Real why I snapper, pour them mean? like this, man, is because I don't want to be turning my fish, right? Yeah. I don't want to be turning my fish. Why is that? When it's steam, it, it, it gets soft, so you don't yeah, want it to break up. I don't want it to break up, so I put them in headway like this. Let yeah, them man. swimming back. Just make them know? dive right back yes, into a pool of yeah. seasoning, a ocean or a sea of seasoning. Yes, I wish man. you could smell this through the camera. I mean, I always talk about the smell and the scent of kitchens, but the flavors that are coming here, I don't know if it's because I have a pepper shrimp right here. Wait, I shake up the pot. Yeah, yeah man. man. Get everything, all the ingredients over the fish. You know, just the cores is opening. Yeah, man. It's so open up right up so ah. everything absorb right down to the bone yes so in the next another 15 minutes or 20 minutes you have a perfect steam fish i don't know if you want to throw in some crackers I don't yeah know man crackers to them man yes man so we're we'll going to them we're we'll going to them just like our jamaican yard style. jamaican yeah. style minister not traveling he's home <laughs> right now and then you have the pepper shrimp right there and this pot of oxtail a bubble bubble like soup some thyme in there as well. And then we're going to have a, 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 a squeeze of lime. Take, take, out, away take off any rawness from our seafood. Yes, man. Wow. So you drop that right in. And then we have some lobster for forward. To, what? Uh, so later on, we're going to give you some garlic butter lobster and lemon butter lobster. Lemon. Look out for that. One's going to be amazing. We sim it down for the next 20 or 10 minutes. Yeah, man, make him go and cover up and yeah, swim. Straight. You can see the bone starting to show. So the meat starting to pull away from the bone. That means that you're getting separation. The tenderness is starting to happen. It's starting to cook down lovely. Just continuously basing it with the sauce, with the vegetables, and letting all of that juices go back in there. I tell you, you can drink that gravy after that. I'm pretty sure it will be something spectacular. I'll wait till we add some crackers to the dot. And what is Jamaican steam fish without some good water crackers? Uh, right, that's it. I need Bamino. I need uh, some good water crackers. I keep going soaking down that sap up all of the moisture, all of the flavor of that broth, of that I don't even want to call it a gravy, too rich to call it a gravy. Well, just what it is. Hmm? Just is what it is. Just what it is. Yeah, man. And you hear the tree knock. Every good chef knock a tree ten. <laughs> yeah. Five minute process and that's it. For the crackers, you don't want it too soggy. You don't want it too hard.
All right. Okay, our first meal for today. Welcome, Minister. Glad Thank to you. Have you here. Our first meal is going to be pepper shrimp, Jamaican style, with ackee and saltfish bruschetta. Okay. So we're bringing a new bruschetta to Jamaica with this ackee and saltfish. So served on a bread fruit. Served on a, and a bread fruit. A bread fruit. A bread ah. Fruit. Yeah. yeah, man. Okay, so, so you, you'll explain the breadfruit um, so the base. Bread, the breadfruit base, a lot of the history of Jamaica comes from West Africa. Mm -hmm. The ackee that we're having is West African, but the colors of Jamaica and our national dish is the ackee. The breadfruit as well is from New Guinea. It was mm -hmm. used in transportation on ship days, on slavery ships. Yes. And it was brought here to feed slaves as a cheap means of feeding slaves. The pepper shrimp is part of our wood and water history coming from Jamaica, which means land of wood and water which Jamaica was already originally known for in St. Elizabeth middle quarters pepper shrimp region the easy access to river streams gave us a means of providing for children to go to school for families to eat so the shrimp would be grown harvested from the rivers then carried down packaged easily cooked in salt water and mm -hmm. scotch bonnet pepper Packaged in plastic bags and served out. And will be preserved. And will be preserved of because of it. Yes. But saltfish now has another history, which yes. is from another continent. Mm -hmm. So saltfish emanates from North America, from Halifax right. in a New Brunswick area of British Columbia. What happens with that? Again, it's related to the historic process but not slaves as they were, but Maroons yeah. as they became. Mm -hmm. And um, when the Maroons war happened with the British and the British were defeated, a part of the agreement that they had was in fact that um, some of the Maroons would go to Newfoundland, oh, wow. to, to Halifax. And the, 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 the trade that happened there was rum, to provide warmth for the people and in return the codfish, the salted fish for the protein staple for the slaves wow. and the workers of the plantation. So that's the history of saltfish. So saltfish and aki then is a confluence of Africa and the Americas. Wow, and is our national dish mm -hmm. which goes back to our out of many one people motto. Absolutely. And this is beautiful. So here in this one dish is the demonstration of the confluence I spoke about. Because aki from Africa, breadfruit also from New, Gu New Guinea, Guinea. Yeah. and saltfish from Canada. from Canada. Out of many, one. So, you know, this is what gastronomy does. It provides you with a story. Yes. And that's what we do. We tell stories. It's funny, Minister, because conceptualizing even one of the tours that we do with gastronomy, I remember going somewhere with going somewhere and listening to you speak and you basically said that tourism was about stories mm -hmm. it's about telling stories mm -hmm. and giving part of your culture to people that visit i remember my grandmother even said they used to have something where visitors would come to the houses or to, to people's homes and have dinner yes. with the Jamaica. yes in those days we used to have the meet the people program which we are going to reintroduce and um the, the whole thing of of how um, Airbnb developed and the extent to which that um, accommodation subset has emerged and become very popular. In fact, that innovation has democratized the accommodation subset in tourism. The ownership is now spread across a wide range yeah. of stakeholders. And that has also enabled people to get a true feel of the culture of the countries they go to. Because now they could be anywhere Absolutely. and enjoy everything. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and, um, and, and they have choices. Now bear in mind that people travel to fulfill their passions. You know, so what we do in Jamaica is to try to build products around their passion points. Yes. 
So you have reasons to come to Jamaica. Any reason you want? Yes, we can respond to it. And, and that's what the complete and ultimate destination seeks to do, to respond to the passions of people. And I believe we've responded very well because from all I've been reading and from I've been seeing is that from 2019, we're basically back to those numbers now and time. Yeah. In fact, the, the good news from this is that um, this is the best summer um, that we've had because we bettered 2019 by 5,000. Wow. I just got the figures, preliminary though they are, and I'm sure when they are finalized, they might be a bit more impressive. So we had somewhere in the region of um, 680,000 visitors in the summer year. And that would have been more than 5,000. We are pretty much the number one destination in the world right now. I've seen where yep. we're ranked higher than Paris, um, other countries who are mega players in the tourism industry that Jamaica is and Montego Bay itself. Well, as a minister, I wouldn't want to say that as loudly as you, because, but, <laughs> but what I can tell you is for sure you're accurate that Montego Bay as the number one um, recovery city for tourism um, and definitely in the Americas um, and we're 23% of the global uh, response which was significantly higher than most other countries as you know when you have to compete with all the countries of the world. If you get 20%, you're doing you're great. Doing <laughs> <very well. laughs> yeah, this breadfruit bruschetta is absolutely delectable. And I think it's perhaps the only place in the Caribbean where you can get a breadfruit bruschetta. <laughs> so, to our Italiano friends and your Mediterranean friends, you know, you know, come on down, come and, on try down and try new. something new, yeah. Garlic sauce, yes. This is the lemon sauce. Garlic lemon? Yes. And garlic. And, and uh, escalation. And escalation. Minister, yeah. Minister, we spoke about 2019 yeah. and mm -hmm. this year. But we're setting records next year, it sounds yes. like as well. 23 is now trending to make new records. Tourism remains the number one contributor to the economy. To the economy. Oh, okay. Gastronomy has emerged as an industry within tourism where people are really, like you said, traveling to come and mm -hmm. sample our food. We've had many guests that said we're traveling just to do our food tour here. Yeah, in fact, 42% of the expenditure of the visitor in any destination is on food. Wow. 42%. So if you get the food experiences right, you're likely to be taking a huge portion of that expenditure staying right in your economy, in your local economy. Absolutely. Because your food is essentially the product of your own culture and creativity. Absolutely. And so we're excited that gastronomy is now 
an important part of the offerings of Jamaica. And I've even heard you say that the, the tourism offers a chance to create wealth where there once was not. Indeed. It gives opportunity to those who just seek the opportunity within tourism. The sector itself has been maintained in such a way and been put at the forefront where you have now the pension scheme for hotel workers oh, yes. and tourism workers, which is unheard of. That is something that gives opportunity to the workers within the industry. Indeed. The so, first in the history of tourism that no. there's a whole sector-wide insurance, um, you know, um, that offers assurance to a future that saves the pain and agony of old age yeah. when you are susceptible to a punary existence. And we, we, we think that if you have worked with tourism for all these years, you should be able to retire gracefully. Absolutely. Irrespective of who you are and where you have worked. Absolutely. And so this is why this is a, a government-inspired um, um, policy program, uh, which, although it's private sector, it is um, backed by by, by legislation. Yes. So we go to Parliament to enact this, this, this scheme, um, which means no administration can change it, no private sector company it's can entrenched. change it. It's entrenched. It's there to give social security to the workers of the tourism industry. Not a hotel, At large. not an attraction, but the entire tourism landscape. And that's why it is unique. We are the only country in the world that's doing it. Driving the whole question of empowering small and micro tourism enterprises. You know the little people in tourism yeah. who are the owners of the real experiences of tourism. The guys who own the street food, you know, experience. Yeah. And the nutraceuticals up in the deep rural utilizing the rich biodiversity, yes. yes. And they are the ones who the middle players draw on yes. and magnify the value to the final consumer. Absolutely. And in the process, leaves very little on the table for those small guys. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at how do we change that around? How do we enable small guys to get a fair share? Because that's what it is, you know, given their life, it is their creativity, you know, it is their um, human resource capabilities that have generated this experience. The but then they only exist as heroes of wood and drawers of water. We see something wrong with that picture. And so Jamaica has been part of a, a global move, you know, to, to drive a consciousness that we need to bring the small and medium enterprises into the mainstream of the tourism value chain. Absolutely. And I'm 100% behind that back and I believe that's what we do on this channel is head out and give authentic Jamaican experiences. Like the minister said, the food is something that you can recreate but you cannot give the experience of being out there with the people that are making the food, that are seasoning your food, right. using the local spices. It goes from the market, from the farmers itself. You have the farmers from St. Elizabeth, George's Plain, West Milan, mm -hmm. all the way around that we come to and they'll buy from the local people. They prepare it locally with the local ingredients and then they serve it to locals. But now we have the tourism sector where people are heading out to those sectors of the island, enjoying that local food and it's contributing to many people, not just the people that you eat from, but to the farmers as well. Absolutely. So this is defined in a lot of ways. Some people call it community tourism. Yes. Some people call it village tourism. But the essence of what we're saying is that the authenticity of the experience is not found in the commercial centers. Yes. It's right in the rural, the deep rural, where it all began, you know, um, where the retentions are strong. Yeah. And people still hold on to these traditional the ways of doing yes, things. Yes, yes, and this is a very Everybody important. come from grandmother kitchen to exactly. grandmother hand down how it's done. I'm a product of that Absolutely. myself. Absolutely. So, so to understand the beginnings, the etymology of these things is very important. 
so so we can then uh, understand its authenticity and and to, to revel in that because that's what you travel for you travel for authentic experiences and um and you go back with a story a real story a story that sometimes is unique to your own process because most of the people who you have seen have never been there but it does something it piques their curiosity yes it does and it also and that's good for me <laughs> <laughs> cheers man. cheers man. A, ni a nice <laughs> glass of coconut water coconut water or just plain water plain water plain water, plain water. jamaican water yes jamaican coconut <laughs> Jelly. Yeah. <laughs> As we say on the tour. So. Yes. But everything that we've had so far is 100% Jamaican. The dishes that we've consumed. There's a little more oxtail over there, actually. Yes. Uh, a little oxtail. Why don't we have oxtail. just a little oxtail? So the, 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 the people know that even though oxtail didn't originate in Jamaica, we can have oxtail from Jamaica. We do have oxtail from. I believe we introduced this type of oxtail. I want to say reintroduced to the world because. Tell me where in the world you could get oxtail done the way it's done in Jamaica. That is nowhere. You can't. I would can't. say nowhere. Yeah, nowhere. Oxtail that is in New Orleans is done in a soup. Exactly. It's not stewed or cooked down like this, but which is why when they took the oxtail from here, the price has gone up because we consumed it and made it what it is. Okay. A lovely piece of third cut meat is what they used to call it our fourth or fifth cut that we've transformed into a beautiful stew indeed and beyond that becomes a delicacy yes yes because now jamaicans enjoy that as a premium dish absolutely you know you know the premium dish for jamaicans were rice and peas and rice, yes and meat or chicken the two meat chicken. chicken 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 is number one um but now oxtail is doing quite a job. Oxtail yeah. is doing his job throughout, throughout the diaspora especially yeah. consumes a lot of yeah. oxtail. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the way it's done. Yes. So you may look at it, um, you know, and yes, you say it's third quarter. And um, oh, we don't it eat was. it. <laughs> but come to Jamaica and you'll see and you'll how see third quarter can be first. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. The good oxtail. The good oxtail, absolutely. Yeah, which is Jamaican oxtail. Jamaican oxtail. See. Done only this way. In wow. Nowhere else in the world does it like this. Nowhere else do yeah. we prepare it, stew it like stew this. Stew it like this. Braise like it pretty much. Yes. Is what we do. Mmm. Yummy. Absolutely yummy. And the strips of potato? Planting. Or planting. Or Planting strips. Mm. The flavor of the oxtail is mm. what's absolutely amazing. Something that's close to the bone with the fat content that mm. it has when that fat renders down. And all you're left with is and with the beans. small piece of meat. With, and with broad the beans. beans. Broad beans. And to share a part of our culture mm -hmm. through food. As you said, the stories that can be told through the different foods. Every bite that you have, every flavor that is mm -hmm. infused into the meat into the vegetable into the rice and peas into mm -hmm. the ackee tells a part of Jamaican story so it's really telling a story about Jamaica through food absolutely 100 percent so we will. the story begins where in the field the story begins the agricultural plots. in the agricultural plots mm -hmm. and the farms straight itself. through to the manufacturing in every aspect. The story begins before it even got to Jamaica. The story begins on the travel to Jamaica. Ah. Different different foods have different ways of traveling how to Jamaica. The origins, how did they get here? If you go to um, Newfoundland now, to go to St. John's, you, in order to be accepted, you have to be screeched. You know what it is to be I screeched? I would love to know, I was just about to ask. Okay, well, there's a little ceremony in the bar. And there's a drink, which is really their rum. It's called Screech. So oh, you have to have the Screech. <laughs> but he here is the story about the Screech. The Screech is really Jamaican white rum, which we sent there, watered down to, <laughs> to a level. To their exactly. alcoholic preference. <laughs> so that's Screech. 
So Screech is still Jamaican. It's still Jamaican. Exactly, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to go to St. John's to be screeched. You have to. But you won't be accepted in the society unless you're screeched. Unless you're screeched. <laughs> you have to get a proper screeching. So you know I was screeched. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing that's missing that is ours. 100% of this mission, I believe, is Jamaican jerk. Ah. Now that story is us. It is Jamaica. It is our people. It is our food. And it is, to me, as entrenched in our culture as reggae music itself. Because jerk is really not a noun. It's actually a uh, verb. Yes, it's a verb. But it's also an adjective. It's, 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 <laughs> it's Jamaica, it's everything. It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have to come to experience the jerk. Exactly. So now, that's a noun, right? Right. <laughs> but is it an adjective? <laughs> but, but, but we are going to jerk the pork. That's the verb. That's the verb. Yes. Yes. And that we now say, that um, it's a terrible thing to be a jerk. It is, <laughs> and, and there goes the adjective. <laughs> so it's a pun on jerk as well. But oh, come on down, you know, it's the only place in the world that you can eat a jerk. A real jerk. <laughs> <laughs> the, the jerk is now a sauce. Yes, jerk. So it, it actually really is the method mm -hmm. of preparing it is the, meat. the method of preparing, which has come from the maroons. So you see how ubiquitous that jerk yes. thing is? You see the story? It's a story all over it. All it over. began again the maroons. The maroons seem to have played such a, a critical part, part in the cuisine yes. of Jamaica. The maroons and the Tainos, which yes. I grew up knowing them as Arawaks. Well, you know, but the Indians, the East Indians, mm -hmm. they, they, because the East Indians were the indentured servants who yes. came to Jamaica after slavery and they brought to them much of their food types and the method of cooking. So curry for example is brought here straight from, from India. Yeah. But Jamaica make a greater curry. We have an absolute uh, you know, amazing uh, curry. Uh, and, 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 and not quarreling with our Indian friends. But I'm only saying that they have to have our curry. They have to have our curry. They have to have our curry. And then and then the currying of, of everything good. And, and, and there's goat, no, of course, you know, there's is, no festivity. No, it's more Mediterranean, East, East, East Africa, African as well. Yes, and North Africa, right? You know, yeah. Nigeria, um, yeah. the Mediterranean, as you say, yeah. um, different pockets throughout Morocco, North Africa, East yeah. Africa as well. The curry itself, though, the Indians actually, I, we said out of many one people before, but they're a huge part of our population and. As out of many one people, the curry has become significant in our gastronomy. Yeah. People travel to try the curry goat, especially. We've done shows we with do curry, everything. We have curry festival. We did have anybody, did you ever put forward that one curry festival? No. That we do have a celebration. I know that there of is curry one. as a food preparatory type that can be uh, applied to any and every protein. Yes. And in fact, in fact. Whether it is it is from the carnivorous or, or the herbivorous or, <laughs> or it is straight vegetables. You exactly. Know, so it's I mean, it, it provides a substance throughout any genre of food yes. that you'd like. Absolutely. And as I tell people that visit all the time, curry is something that's served from a birth to a funeral. Yes. So in between that birthdays, festivities, you name it, a goat is generally killed and it's part of our tradition. But what makes our curry so different and special. It's a particular spice called Scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Scotch bonnet. Yes. But where is Scotch bonnet? Scotch bonnet is Jamaican. Scotch bonnet is ours. It's Jamaican. Scotch bonnet, yes, yeah. absolutely. It so, is just like pimento. So, so you really want to taste curry with a difference? Curry with a, you come on down twist. and come and enjoy yeah, that it's, Scotch it's bonnet. That is what Scotch I love. Bonnet. It's yeah. almost like the jerk, pimento. Yes. Yes, with yes, the yes, pimento again, is what is pimento. found here that makes it that spice. No, I believe we grow some of the best herbs and spices throughout the world. Absolutely. And, uh, and I, I mean, you know that our herbs and spices are in demand. The problem with us is we just can't produce enough. I'm, I, I have a problem with that right yes, now. I get so calls every day. I'm inundated with calls for pimento, pimento wood, different but variations. We, we think of the technology pimento. might be, be helpful down the road. Yes. 
to increase our production. Of and the capacity of, the producing. capacity of producing. But then we created a little technology, yes, that we call Alex. Yes. And Alex now is an app which connects the farmers to the hotels. Directly. So that's Directly. It's done right there on yeah. your mobile device. So the little farmer up in, they don't know Octembedi, but you know Octembedi. <laughs> 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 but think about rural, rural. Yes, yes. Octembedi. Can on their little speak to the procurement manager of the largest hotel in Jamaica. Wow. And in that process, say yes, and we are ready. We can supply you with 100 kilos of, uh, um, of, of fresh pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, the price is $10 a, a kilo. In 10 minutes, we can be there. Wow. Boom, 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 done. And he says, yes, we want it. And in two seconds, the money is on the phone. Access. And in their account, and the delivery is made. And that's how we Fantastic. the use of technology use to of expand technology. the horizon of not just through the tourism industry, but using the tourism industry to broaden the other markets and industries Absolutely. in Jamaica. Itself. Linkages. Yes. That's a new the big network. word that we have. In I like it. It's a Jamaican linkages. word. The links. <laughs> the links, yes. yes. So we link the farmer with the hotel. We link the supplier with the buyer. Right. You 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 and I know our greatest uh, resources and people. The people. The asset is the people, people itself. And it's the people. Yeah. Everything we're talking about here since it's the people. we began. It's about what our people do, it's about what our people look like, it's one hundred percent joy. It's about what people, our people have to offer. It, we have spoken nothing no. about sugar cane. No, we have but we've not. talked about rum. We've about rum. <laughs> Which is in part the sugar cane <laughs> the, transformed the product, into a bottle. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's, it's really a wonderful place to come. Yeah. Um, look at us this, this, this afternoon. You know? um, a few minutes ago, it appeared that it would be hailing. I, I was telling the and camera seconds, before you got in here In that seconds, the clouds have all disappeared oh. and not a shower and we're not having nice sunshine and the beach is beautiful. The water is calm. The water is calm. Just paradise in itself. Where else in the world? Only in Jamaica. Only in Jamaica. Absolutely. Minister, yes. thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. You. I mean, it's an honor to sit with you, to share Jamaican food with you and to share your vision and what you've contributed. Thank you so much for what you've done for our country and what you continue to do. Your vision and your leadership on the world stage has made many of us proud from what you do within your own constituency when it comes to education, when it comes to factoring the people of tourism itself. The vision has never skewed. It's always been about Jamaica and the betterment for Jamaica and Jamaicans. And for that, I thank you. And I'm pretty sure most of our viewers would thank you as well. Thank you very much. It was a very kind. So thank you to the Honorable Edmund Bartlett, Tourism Minister, for taking time out of his busy schedule to sit down with us, speak about gastronomy, let us taught me some stuff about some of the food history, um, the Maroons in New Brunswick and a variety of other stuff that we went over, but just a really nice experience to sit down and hear what he has planned for Jamaica or gastronomy industry, how tourism has contributed so much to the island, to the GDP, to the overall sustainability of Jamaica and hopefully We'll go out and experience some more foods throughout this land we love, but to know that what we're doing is being recognized and that the people itself that we go and we see can get a direct impact or some sort of love from outside, from tourism, visiting the places that we go to is really amazing and something that is truly dear to me and I encourage everybody, get up, get out, enjoy your local cuisine, go big up your local chef, your local restaurant your cook shop, anywhere you got to find food. And until next time, bless up.